I'm happy to introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Jeffrey Steele. Some of you may recall that Jeffrey was a guest speaker a while ago and educated us on the subject matter of ambiguous loss. He really listened to our questions at the end and provided some great advice. Today, Jeffrey is here to look a little deeper into our own self-awareness on this journey of caring for a loved one living with dementia. So here's a bit about Dr. Steele. Dr. Jeffrey Steele is a bereavement service manager for Volusia, Flagler, and Putnam counties for VITAS Healthcare. His role is to provide psychological, social, and spiritual education to the VTAS team, as well as the bereavement support training to the entire company. He also works with the marketing department to provide education to facilities about the services they offer. To date, VTAS Healthcare serves 900 people. In addition to all of that, Jeffrey currently facilitates numerous caregiver support groups. And he's part of a national team with VTAS Healthcare. Jeffrey also co leads a support group for um, parents who have lost children. On a personal note, Jeffrey has lived abroad in London, England, for 16 years and recently returned home to Florida in February of 2020. He has a great passion for surfing. When um, he's on a break, he loves to uh, take those surf trips and, and enjoy the water. So, uh, Jeffrey, we thank you for joining us once again and being willing to share your knowledge with us. So I'm going to hand the meeting over to you. Well, thank you so much, Sherry, and thank you to all the team. It's so very good to be with all of you today. Um, I just want to, for the new people, explain as well with my um really recent discovery before we get into why we chose the topic of self-awareness i lead numerous support groups every month and uh, they are all in person and they are um beginning to really really grow the latest group that i did, i started um is a sunday evening group on um exploring faith through the journey of grief how grief impacts or doesn't impact um, a grieving time and loss, uh, because people who do have a faith and possess a faith, sometimes that faith is rattled um, and they have lots of, lots of questions. So one of the things seeing that in looking at grief in relationship to care to patients and Alzheimer's patients is that a lot of times the emotions that we have that are going on while we caregive, that are very human, that are very normal, that are to be expected and uh, not to feel bad about. Um, there are different models of, of grief. And some, there's a four cycles of grief, five cycles of grief, seven cycles. I tend to lean more towards the seven cycles. And it's not so much a circle as it is like a pretzel, because all of these emotions and things go on, particularly in caregiving. And one of the things that can happen during our caregiving is that we can lose a sense of our own identity, who we are, what we enjoy, um, different emotions. Guilt can come up um, if we're having particularly like fun without our loved one who is suffering, et cetera. And one I'm preparing for now is as we head to the hall is how to prepare and to lessen stress during the holiday season, how to approach the holidays um, with our loved ones who have um, dementia and other things. Now, something very new since the last time I spoke with you all, I have a father-in-law with probably stage six, late stage six uh, dementia. There's usually about seven stages. and so the difficulty, the frustrations, and he lives down in Brazil. So I'm not only a educator for dementia, I am also a caregiver now as well. 
uh, in far distant caregiver. So it, it can become very, very difficult. So what I'm going to share today is not only comes from an educational perspective, but also a personal perspective allow my story as well um, to impact yours. One of the things I recently found is a, a letter, a letter that was addressed to grief. It's a beautiful sharing of the relationship with self-awareness and the process of grief recovery in caregiving. Or, and with caregiving and with dementia, what I'm talking about is sometimes the slow loss of the original relationship that we knew very well and loved. And that can bring a lot of pain and it is sometimes a double loss, particularly when we lose them and they pass away. So I'm gonna read this letter to kind of get us um, in the mode, in the present, um, and to allow things that are in this letter to perhaps even bring up some of your own emotion experiences to perhaps allow this letter, as I have done with myself, to be a mirror to my own soul and heart about what I'm actually experiencing and allow those emotions to come to the surface in a very safe space. So let me read this letter for us. Dear Grief, before the others showed up, I never knew you. Before their soiled boots stepped across our family's pastel carpet, we had never been truly introduced. You would come and visit from time to time, but you never stayed long. A quick visit amongst acquaintances, quick conversations with not a tinge of substance, so I let the officers into our home. You snuck in as well. As we sat distracted by their words, by their kind sympathies, you unpacked your bags, moving in. You moved in, becoming a permanent fixture in my life, filling my every breath every essence, every movement. You sat silently in the room with my family, watching the hours pass by. You stood beside me while I cried, screaming out to the stars, asking why. You kneeled beside me in the ornate marble place of my own as the reality of my loneliness again. You became my one constant, a best friend, a worst enemy, the only one I could turn to. You sat beside me and my uncertainty, listened as I questioned who I am, who I want to be. As I traveled, you traveled with me, unpacking your suitcase in every city I visited, neatly tucking away your clothes under mine. You kept your distance as I tried to push you away, covered your face as I tried to hide from you. You were always there. You became the constant face I could rely on. I could truly confide in. As I grew, as I changed, you understood my every step. You never judged, just followed. As the months drew on, I tried more feverishly to hide you from my friends and my family. Scared they wouldn't understand our relationship. Scared they wouldn't try to take you from me. Scared they wouldn't understand why I came to love you. 
So I hit you. I hid you behind a smile, a laugh, a joke, never allowing anyone to see you, never allowing anyone to sense your presence. But you were always there. Stealing my breath as the cold members would pierce through my lungs. Escape the corner of my eye as my heart quiet broke. You felt my pain holding my hand through it, holding me as darkness consumed my body on certain days. You held me never letting go, never letting me go. You loved me, loved my every essence. The dark, the light, you loved. You encouraged me to move forward to find life, to find myself. And you stood there, hand extended, for when I fell, Slowly you moved out, taking your toothbrush from the holder in the bathroom. Slowly you moved out as our words became less frequent. As we grew distant, we grew distant, two lives in two different places. We grew distant. Now and again, we run into each other. Now and again, as I walk alone on the street. You greet me with your warm embrace, holding my hand as you used to do, holding me in the safety, the familiarity of your arms. We sit face to face, catching up as tears gently fall. You sit listening, captivated as the words pour out. You sit, an old friend, Catching my tears as they fall. You sit, allow me to feel again. Allow me to exhale, exhale the thoughts trapped within my mind. You hold me as I break. Holding me as you pick up the pieces. Pulling me together. Putting the puzzle pieces back. You lock me in a warm embrace. Holding me a smile of tears from behind the tears, holding me, the tea grows cold, and the conversation lightens. You stand as laughter fills the room, walking to the door, your arms wrapped around me as we say our goodbyes. We say our goodbyes, eyes full of love, as you walk down the hallway, as I watch you walk away. A letter to grief. As we sit and allow that to stir within us, grief and loss and self-awareness and all of that go hand in hand very closely. First, the letter we notice and denial. A lot of what goes on in caregiving, whether a loss occurs suddenly or with some advance notice, it's always possible and likely that we experience some shock. You feel perhaps emotionally numb on certain days. And you may continue to fight in order to deny the loss in caregiving for someone with dementia. But after the shock and the denial, also simultaneously, much like the letter we just heard, there's pain and guilt, and maybe even a little bit shame, because during this stage in grieving, the pain of the loss begins to set in. You may also feel guilty for needing more from family and friends 
particularly during those times of heavy emotions. And getting to these understandings of what's going on is becoming self-aware and not hiding it, not hiding this new companion in our life called grief. During this time, particularly when days are difficult in caregiving, and it's very normal, we can get to this stage that is angering and bargaining. You may lash out people, even your loved one that you're caring for, or become angry with yourself, or you might try to strike a bargain with this perhaps with a higher power, asking that the loss be taken away in exchange for something on our part. And we begin to bargain, looking for a way out. And sometimes along with this can come some, and it would be normal, depression and loneliness. And as you reflect on the loss of this loved one due to dementia and Alzheimer's, you may start to feel depressed and lonely, particularly because there's a loss of relationship that's happening, no matter what that relationship is, spouse to spouse, spouse, uh, mom or dad to children, etc. It's in this stage, in grieving, that you truly begin to realize the reality of your loss, the loneliness, the upward turn begins to happen. And we see this in the pattern of that letter that was read on self-awareness with this companion of caregiving that joins us at times called grief. We begin to adjust to our new life. And the intensity of the pain you feel in the loss starts to reduce some. At this point in the grieving process, you may notice that you are beginning to feel a bit calmer about things. And then we move, perhaps, just as the letter did reconstruction and working through things about what's taking place and what's going on. This stage involves taking action in our lives to move forward. You begin to reconstruct your new normal. It's a new normal. One of my clients said that she wakes up each day she says, she's a person of faith. Okay, God, today is my new normal. Give me strength today. And working through any... Jeffrey, we've lost the audio.
Okay. So I, I think we'll pause here for a minute. Um, we've lost our guest speaker and that's a first for us, but um, my assumption is that he is um, gonna go right back, um, consider it a commercial break, um, get up and get some something to eat or drink if you need to. Um, Jim looks like he's- uh, It won't be that that long he's signing back on okay sorry for the interruption but we will we will continue on here momentarily there he is Looked like he was signing on, but now I don't see. Him. Oh, there he is at the bottom, but just video. I think he called in on audio on his phone. That's well, pretty scene joining. We have a technical uh, yeah. difficulty. Yeah. There we go. Yes, I'm, I'm back. I mean, it is raining cats and dogs out here. So that's the weather report from here in Florida in Daytona Beach. So, so sorry, please forgive me. Um, hopefully nothing will happen again. So this final stage, let me get back to where I was. The final stage is acceptance and hope. We saw this as grief began to pack up the bathroom, the um the toothbrush and began to walk down the hallway and to leave the house leaving the person with hope this is the goal of this process acceptance and hope it's the final stage of the grieving process of loss you begin to accept the loss and you feel hope for what tomorrow might bring it's not that your other feelings that you had during this process are gone. That's not the case at all. It's just more so that you've accepted them, all of those emotions, and you're ready to move on in this process. So I want to give you quickly 12 steps if we can pull this up. I just will read through these 12 steps that I give to my groups um, for caregivers for those with dementia um, and Alzheimer's. Can we pull that up there? Thanks, Jim. So let's, I'm gonna read through these and if you can need to make it bigger, um, that's okay. And if you all later would like to have a copy of this, I can um, scan one to Sherry and send it to her. But this is uh, from VDOS, it's what we use. Um, when I do caregiver groups in person. The 12 steps for caregivers. One, and this is something that keeps us human in caregiving. Although I cannot control the disease process, I need to remember I can control many aspects of how it affects my relative. Two, I need to take care of myself so that I can continue doing the things that are most important to me. Number three, I need to simplify my lifestyle so that my time and energy are available for things that are really important at this time. Four, I need to cultivate the gift of allowing others to help me because caring for my relative is too big of a job to be done by just one person. Five, I need to take 
one day at a time, rather than worry about what may or may not happen in the future. Six, I need to structure my day because excuse me, I need to structure my day because a consistent schedule makes life easier for my relative and me. And seven, I need to have a sense of humor because laughter helps to put things in more positive perspective. Eight, I need to remember that my relative is not being difficult on purpose, rather that his or her behavior and emotions are distorted by the illness. Nine, I need to focus on and enjoy what my relative can still do, rather than constantly lament over what is gone. Ten, I need to increasingly depend upon other relationships for love and support. And 11, I need to frequently remind myself that I am doing the best I can at this very moment. And 12, I need to draw upon the higher power, which I believe is available to me. Grief does not have to bring fear to us. It's not that we are we shouldn't feel guilty for having those feelings. These are the processes that we have to go through for what at times I should say to be truthful about dementia and Alzheimer's can be a very cruel disease. It is not a psychological problem. Alzheimer's and dementia is an illness, and we should remember to treat it as such, not that they are going crazy, because they cannot control what is happening to them. And so, as we think about these things, as we think about this guest called grief, let us look for that end result as we process this so that we can get to the acceptance and hope and really remember to be thankful and grateful for not what our loved one can no longer do or be to us, but what they can be for us in this process. Thank you.